Why aren't these as common as these? Probably because robot lawnmowers have a reputation for being extremely expensive and tedious to install and manage, mainly because a lot of mowers up until now have required you to dig boundary wire for them. But the newest generation of robot lawnmower is a far cry from what they were even just a couple of years ago. In this review, I'm going to get hands-on with one of Segway's newest lawn robots, the i-Series. This robot, the Navimo i-110, uses no boundary wires, and it's supposed to be smart enough not to just do without them, but to even create its own map and see the edges of your lawn all by itself thanks to AI integration. Quite the promise. I'll take a look at what you get, what the Navimo i-110 is like to set up, and what's required in terms of installation, as well as how it works and how effective it is at cutting my lawn. I'll wrap things up with both the pros and the cons of this yard robot so you can see if it might be right for you. I would like to say thank you to Segway for sending me an iSeries robot to try out here at my home. While the company did supply the robot, it didn't ask for and wasn't given permission to have any input into this review, so these thoughts are all my own. To help understand whether this might be the right product for you, let's dig a bit deeper into how this robot lawnmower works. The Navimo i110 uses satellites via what's called a GNSS antenna or Global Navigation Satellite System, plus an onboard 140 degree fisheye camera, as well as sensors to accurately locate your robot on your property to avoid obstacles and to mow accurately. The satellite technology allows you to precisely delineate boundaries and zones in your yard so the robot can navigate without the need for boundary wires. This makes it far, far easier to install and much more precise when it comes to cutting the lawn. What's in the box? Every Segway Navimo i-Series comes with everything you need to install and set it up. There are essentially three sets of components. The first is your robot, then the two-piece base station. The third key component is your satellite antenna, and you'll also see these called RTK antennas, GNSS antennas, or here the EFLS, or Exact Fusion Location System. There's also power cables and extensions for those cables in the box, as well as the components to stake your cables and your dock into the ground. Finally, you get a set of 12 spare cutting blades. Lastly, it's not in the box, but you'll want to download the free Navimo app. Because the Segway Navimo i-Series relies on satellite positioning, you do need to place both the antenna and the charging station in optimal locations. Setting up the GNSS antenna is both straightforward, and yet it still does require some care and attention. You need to find a spot where nothing interferes with the satellite reception. This means it can't be too close to homes or buildings, it shouldn't be underneath a roof, and it needs to be clear of trees or other other large obstacles as well. The good news is you won't be testing in the dark since the Navimo app comes with a built-in feature called Satellite Signal Analyzer, which can scan the area for visible satellites. Essentially, you'll drive the mower around your yard, and as it goes, it gauges the ideal location where it can get the best view of the satellites it needs to see. It did take me numerous tries and several placement locations before I was able to find an ideal spot for it. Because you need to keep the charging station at least two meters away from the house and trees while also staying close-ish to a plug, this can be a real challenge. I did have to try placing the mower against my house, but had to move it to another location when I was unable to pull in a satellite signal. I truly did need to find a place that was more than two meters from my home, as well as two meters from any of the several trees in my yard. Those extension cables included in the box really came in handy, but if you ever need a setup where the charging station and antenna are really far off, you can buy extra lengths. Once the app gives you a green light on your placement of the base station and the antenna, it's time to map your yard. Helpfully, the app is going to walk you through the mapping process as well. In a nutshell, you'll use the virtual joystick inside the app to guide the robot around the edges of your lawn. Between doing this and allowing the satellite to more accurately position the robot for you, you should be able to get a really accurate map. Rather funnily, I struggled with this process the first couple of times I tried it, and I actually couldn't get the app to generate a map for me. I kept getting a strange error message saying, if you need to redraw the map, tap the eraser icon to make the mower go backwards to delete the wrong path. I could not figure out for the life of me why the robot wouldn't drive forward so I could outline the yard with it, and I only accidentally stumbled upon the solution. It turns out I was trying to drive it backwards so it wouldn't go anywhere. 
perhaps not intuitively, the large wheels on the robot are actually at the front of it, which is the opposite of most other lawn robots I've seen and reviewed. So when this mower is docked, it's actually facing front in. Now, once this brainwave hit me, I also noticed the camera lens I didn't see before, small face palm, and I was able to start the mapping process correctly. And let me tell you, once I got over my goof, this was super easy. In essence, just use the joystick in the app to drive the robot around the edges of your lawn. If your lawn is rather clearly defined, you can even use what's called the assist mapping feature, which will use the robot's onboard camera and the sensors along with some AI to help detect those edges and boundaries for you. All you need to do is walk along behind the robot and stay within Bluetooth range while it does all the work. This was actually incredibly genius and really accurate, and it made the mapping process so much easier. I had all the areas of my lawn mapped in just a couple of minutes, and it went so well, I decided I might as well map out my neighbor's yards too. The robot is smart enough to navigate through distinct and unconnected areas of your property, but for this to work properly, you do need to create what are called channels between those areas. This is also really easy inside the app. Then the robot will use those channels to navigate between the unconnected areas. And you can, of course, also create no-go zones or off-limits areas within your map. More than just detecting boundaries, the Navimo i-Series has the ability to see a bit clearer using what's called visual slam or simultaneous localization and mapping. VSLAM is helpful because it'll store the location data of things like your house, trees, and other features in the yard, so the mower can compare its visual data with the mapped data to maintain its positioning accuracy and keep it on target in case it ventures into an area where there happens to be poor satellite reception at that moment. Gotta love technology. Once your yard has been defined, mowing is as simple as tapping the virtual button inside the Navimo app. You can choose which area or zone to mow at any time or set up daily or weekly schedules where the robot is gonna take care of all the cutting automatically. I opted to have each of our zones cut on different days each week to keep things trim and tidy. The scheduling feature worked really well and it was nice not having to manage the robot. One thing I also noticed is that the robot's going to cut your lawn in different directions every few days. For example, on one week it will go east to west, week two or day two it'll cut north-south, and then attempt three it'll cut on a diagonal. This helps to keep the lawn tidy but also prevents any ruts from developing, which is a really nice feature. And if at any time you want to check in on your robot's progress or see where it's at, just zoom in on your virtual map in the app for a real-time positioning view. I did notice a couple areas of the lawn that I think were missed on the first run of mapping, probably when I was still trying to figure things out. I opted to remap this area of my lawn to get a more precise trim. In all honesty, once the robot is set up correctly, there's really very little for you to do aside from enjoy a labor-free lawn. And because I also opted to map both of my neighbors' lawns as well, they are also able to enjoy a more relaxing summer. Depending on the size of the area you want to take care of, you could definitely share the cost of something like this with a couple neighbors so everyone could benefit. The i110 seemed to have more than enough battery power and capacity to manage three lawns on a regular schedule. Hear that? No, you don't. One of the great features of an electric battery powered mower like this is it can cut your lawn almost completely silently. Navimo i110 makes almost no noise while it's running save for the occasional mulching sound. That means it's also an option to have the mower run overnight to cut the grass for you and I love this option too. Navimo i110 allows you to choose different cutting heights from 2 to 3.6 inches. Unlike some other mowers where this adjustment is made inside the app, on the i110 there is a physical dial where you'll adjust the height of the blade. I am a bit surprised this is manual operation, but in truth, once you settle on a preference for cutting height, I've found you don't really need to adjust it very often. No doubt some of you out there are wondering how to keep your robot secure. After all, this pricey lawn robot could definitely become the target of theft. Unfortunately, right out of the box, there isn't much in the way of anti-theft features. Inside the app, you can enable an alarm that will sound if the mower is lifted, and it will also send a push notification to your phone. Let's give that a try. 
The siren is reasonably loud and it certainly does draw attention and it does take quite a bit of work to input your pin code onto the robot to shut the alarm off. Plus, if stolen, the mower does require that pin code to operate. Now, I'm not clear if this could be bypassed potentially by fully resetting the mower. If you want more robust anti-theft features or the ability to track a stolen robot, you will need to buy the add-on Navimo Access Plus module for about 149 US dollars, which will allow 4G cellular connectivity and real-time location tracking. I'm kind of surprised this technology isn't already integrated into the mower given the value and the current price. When I reviewed the Husqvarna Auto Mower, it actually has quite a few advanced security features, which mean it can be tracked anywhere and it simply won't function if not used with the correct account and the designated base station. Because my mower is mainly parked out front of my house where anyone could happen by, I would absolutely want to add that Access Plus module. I may take a look at that in a future video, so let me know if that's something you're interested in seeing as well. The other thing I plan to do with my mower is to build it some type of shelter or garage where it can park itself maybe a little more out of sight, but that's a project for later this summer. And again, if you end up wanting more information about that, do let me know in the comments. One of the other questions I get about robot lawnmowers revolves around pets and animals. Happily Segway says the Navimo i110 identifies 13 common animal species, including most common house pets, to help it avoid doing any harm. For the most part, my dogs weren't interested in getting anywhere close to the mower, so I didn't have a good opportunity to test this out. If it encounters people, it slows and it will just drive right around you. I was quite impressed at the battery life of this robot mower. The i110 can run for about two hours on a full charge, and for me, this was more than enough time to get each section of my lawn and the neighbor's lawns cut. And of course, because the robot returns automatically to the charging base when done, it should always have a full battery. If the robot does need to top up its charge while it's working, it'll go back to the station on its own and then recharge before heading back out to complete the job. I have noticed that with some robot lawn mowers, battery longevity does wane over time, so it will be interesting to see how this battery fares after a year or two. Sensors aside, I'm really impressed with the overall look of the Navimo. The large wheels really give the robot that rugged, somewhat tough look. Plus, it's built to tackle challenging terrain too, with the ability to climb slopes as steep as 30 degrees. Of course, my lawn here is mostly flat, so I didn't get much of a chance to verify this. Another feature that stood out for me was the way the Navimo i-series mower responds to weather conditions, which we're having a little bit of right now. The mower has a built-in rain sensor that can trigger the mower to return to its charging dock the moment it detects rain so it can avoid damaging a softened lawn. And when snow, frost, or strong winds or high temperatures are detected, the mower can either pause mowing or delay any upcoming mowing tasks. Inside the app, you can make adjustments for different types of weather. The mower itself also has an IP66 rating for protection against water and dirt, so it's not going to be too precious. The mower is also capable of readjusting its schedule on its own, depending on that weather forecast. And speaking of the IP rating, if you do want to clean your robot, a gentle spray with the hose should be enough to safely keep it clean of day-to-day -day dirt or even lawn landmines. Ask Navimo to cut the lawn. The i-series mowers can also integrate with your Amazon Alexa and Google Home powered smart home networks. Sure, starting the Vimo. Getting this set up is really quite easy whether you start with the Google Home app as I did or use the Navimo app to link your mower to your favorite smart home assistant. The Navimo i110 also has traction control which can be incredibly helpful for lawns with a lot of hills or elevation change. The traction control feature helps to keep the mower from slipping particularly on wet or muddy lawns and enabling this should help reduce the chances of the mower getting stuck and avoid it potentially carving up a soft lawn. I did enable this feature even though my lawn is relatively simple and mostly flat. I can confirm though at no time during my several weeks of testing did the mower ever get stuck. Overall I've been really impressed with this yard robot and having a maintenance free lawn so far this summer has been truly awesome. Let's go over both the pros and the cons so you can see if this robot lawnmower might be right for you. On the pro side, because this mower does not use boundary wire, it's a breeze to install and set up really quickly. Once I figured out which end was the front, the mapping was super easy, and with the AI-powered edge detection feature, that made getting accurate boundaries so much simpler. With the ability to send the mower out to cut either the whole lawn or specific zones, as well as a scheduling option, you'll barely have to manage anything. I found the mower cut the lawn really well, and I very much appreciated the fact it will change cutting directions periodically too. 
I can also confirm the mower never got stuck for me and never ended up running out of battery. Plus, there are a ton of special features in this mower as well, such as weather adaptability, voice control, traction control, and object and animal recognition. And with AI smarts built into the mapping, antenna placement, navigation, and overall operation, this should mean you need to intervene a lot less. So what are the potential downsides? Anyone who's not familiar with this technology might find it intimidating to get it set up, but I'm here to tell you it's actually pretty simple once you understand what to do. I do think there should be more anti-theft features built into this device to prevent it from being stolen and used by someone else. It might also be nice if you could adjust the cutting height inside the app. But so far, after several weeks with the Navimo i110 here, I have to say I've been incredibly impressed at both the performance and the overall ease of use, so for those reasons I can absolutely recommend it for you. Navimo i110 sells for about $1,299 US or $1,899 Canadian, and you can get it from Amazon or outdoor garden retailers. And this is not the first lawn robot I've had the chance to test out. Check out what happened after I spent three years with a Husqvarna, or see what competitor Ecovacs is offering with its goat lawn robot right now.